Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King 3. And today I'm going to be giving you part 8 of what if Naruto was half Kryptonian and half Saiyan guys. Remember to get this one to 100 like as usual. Share this to all of your friends on your social media platform. And also guys, go ahead and check out the brand new episode of what if Naruto got special training as a child. Over on Anime King 2. And over on Anime King, I post a brand new episode of What If Naruto is a Seal Master with the Osusuke Byakugan. So go ahead, check out that and enjoy, guys. And if you're new, yes, I did have three channels Anime King, Anime King 2, and Anime King 3, which I post What If on every single day for you guys to enjoy. So stay in tune and stick around for the rest of them coming your way, guys. And yeah, don't forget to turn on that bell notification stay posted. So without further ado, what do you say we leap right into this new episode start? The intro. So the last spot we left off, Zoom was very angry. No, he was downright furious. The thing was, Zoom was very passionate about Lord Orochimaru. And when he ran back home after his first failed mission, he saw the disapproving gaze that Orochimaru gave him, and he felt just so horrible. He just, he just couldn't take it. So today on the exam finals, he was gonna make it up to his lord. By killing Snevi. He knew that she was a problem in his lord's side. The entire village of Kanoha was. But the more so he wanted to do it was for revenge. He wanted to make Naruto suffer. He wanted him to experience pain like none other for. Making him feel his lord and humiliating him. While that was going on, Yujito relinked her, well, will, to the Nibi. As she took over her body, the Red Cat gave her a specific goal. As her job was to defeat Naruto by any means necessary. It was a chance for Kumo to show the strength that they possess over Kanoha so with that they fight. The battle became chaotic as she transformed however. Naruto was taking hits from left to right but he was still not going down. Shocking the Raikage. The people were shocked. That was a simple child standing up to a biju. Something like that should not be possible but here it was. As he was beating the said biju down. As things became hectic as he launched, a bitch bomb towards him, however, Naruto crossed his arms and flared his key as it exploded upon him, but he burst out of the smoke as he was barely even harmed. He rushed towards her and jumped before he delivered a punch that shattered the entire grounds. As it knocked her out cold, Yujito also fell unconscious as well, as Naruto noticed the necklace around her neck with the green gen on as he backed off a bit. She was taken to the infirmary as he won. So with that, the next match started up. With Sasuke learning from Kushina the Uzumaki style and not to mention her teaching him since he was younger, Sasuke outmatched Gara in every single way, speed, strength, so much so that he was dominating the match. However, Gara started to go crazy as he went literally psychotic and transformed. As Orochimaru was rethinking the whole invasion until Zoom made a move and attacked Snelli. As Snappy was able to see the blur as she smashed the ground. As it made him stumble as she leaped towards the arena. As Naruto was up in the box confused what was going on. As Urchimaru gave the signal, feathers started to fall. The Konoha ninjas fell in unconscious. So with that, Snappy managed to caught Zoom. However, once again he felt humiliated. Once again he felt horrible. Knowing that he was going to fail his master. So he did something that he wasn't able to do since Naruto. He started to vibrate at such an intense rate that he literally phased right through her hand as he ran right through her. However, in the process, he ripped out her heart. Literally ripping out her heart. Snede Senju was shocked as she stood there. As her ability of healing could not help her recover from this as she dropped her knees. 
As Naruto jumped down there, he screamed out her name as he saw his mother fall. He cautiously and slowly walked towards her as he saw. With his extra vision that she didn't have her heart anymore, Zoom mocked him and laughed. But Naruto wasn't paying attention to nothing around him as he heard people screaming out his name. As the invasion took place, Naruto carried his mother's body straight towards the house. As he placed her on the bed, memories flashed through his mind of her. As Naruto was barely holding it together, once he exited the compound, he lost it. His hair turned green as he turned into the legendary Super Saiyan. As it amplifies power beyond wild disagrees, he went after the largest thing as he started to lose his mind. He threw Shikaku straight out of the village. Gathering a small green ball in his hand, Naruto threw it. Garu was blasted out of Shikaku as he was launched. Luckily, because of Shikaku taking up most of the damage, Garu survived. But he was rather badly burned as his siblings managed to arrive and take him away, running for their life. As Naruto went in a rampage, Sakura grabbed onto him though as she released the loudest scream that she ever produced. She screamed directly in his face as she screamed out his name for him to recognize who he was and what was going on. As she kept on screaming even when her voice was going hoarse, as blood was leaking from her mouth, she screamed. A memory of his mother, when she said that she would always protect him, ran through Naruto's mind. As he was able to regain his sense of self and where he was, calming himself as he realized exactly what was going on, however, that didn't mean that anything was over as he told. Kushineta please get Sakura somewhere safe, he cannot lose anyone else. His eyes turned red as he started to blast everyone with his heat vision, literally incinerating all the enemies. Naruto went into a murderous rampage as he started to slaughter them all, before he broke right through the barrier. The sound four tried to stop him but he slaughtered them like they were nothing but animals. His raw hands ripping them apart, he then grabbed Urchimaru as Hiruzen was shocked as he was shocked towards the brutality that Naruto was showing. As Naruto flew, Orochimaru straight out of the village, literally flying him in the atmosphere, going past the earth. Orochimaru was baffled and shocked his mind, going a mile a second, as Naruto brought him down in the hidden sand. As Naruto body hit the ground, Orochimaru threw a grab. The entire snake saw him obliterated on contact. A quarter of the sand was petrified. As Naruto flew back to the village at blinding speeds, Zoom had ran away as he had stand in the valley of the end waiting for his master. However, he feared the worst. But something strange happened as a meteorite came from the heavens. But this was no ordinary meteorite as he saw there was a beautiful girl inside, a ship of sorts. However, the ship light up as there was a strange thing on it. The thing introduced itself as Brainiac. As the thing was technological it seems. Zoom had no idea what was going on. Meanwhile, Naruto arrived as Naruto proceeded to slaughter all the ninjas that tried to flee. When they arrived, Yuji rushed towards him as she began to stop. It was over now as she saw that he was losing control again. His hair was still spiked up and it was green. As she held onto him tight, as Naruto started to break down, he lost her. His mother was gone. As he broke down, as she held onto him, as he had just created a massacre that no one would ever forget, especially the spies from the other nations that were watching the whole thing. The right Kage also saw uh, opportunity. That is why he allowed his forces to help Kanoha in the invasion. So yeah guys, so basically let's left off you guys can switch across the place of yourself and we'll see begin this new episode. Several top ninjas from the sound had gathered together. These ninjas were the ones that were usually in charge. To get things straight, they were under Orochimaru, under Kabuto, under Kimimaru, under the Sound 4. They were below, but they were still in charge of the lesser Cannon Fathers. They were all gathered. After all, Orochimaru was dead. Kanoha was pissed off. But while Kanoha was a threat, there was one person in particular that he should be worrying about, and that was Naruto Senju. Everyone knew about the onslaught that he brought down at June exams. He slaughtered thousands and not to mention he killed Archmar Sama. The room was filled with a lot of noise. As everyone was making a fuss and talking, they were just making a lot of noise. They did not know what to do. Kabuto was inside the room as well. 
Many of them were looking towards him as, well, hope. To tell him what to do after all, he was urged to my right hand man. However, the door kicked open as everyone went silent. Someone walked in as he was none other than Zoom. He was covered in blood. The members gasped in shock. As he was covered in so much blood, his hands mostly dripping on the ground. Kabuta's eyes went wide as he got to his feet. What have you done? Sit down, said Zoom, giving Kabuta the deadliest glare ever. Zoom seemed really pissed off. While Kabuta was a prominent Joni 11 ninja, Zoom's speed made it rather difficult to fight him. And not to mention, Kabuto was strong, however, Kimimaru was strong as well. And at the moment, Zoom slammed the head of Kimimaru down on the table. Now, I'm only gonna say this once. I'm not gonna repeat myself. Lord Urchmaru might be gone, however, his legacy will still live on. Through me, there is one thing you people understand the most, and that is power. Kimimaru refused to go my ways. He refused to do as I say. He refused to take words from me. So I had to remove him from the equation and several others. Zoom flashed around the room, picking up a lot of chaos as he moved. He then stopped and slammed his hand on the decks. In doing so, a surge of electricity destroyed it. And I'm going to do the same to all of you, he said his voice. Becoming dark, if you don't do as I say. At this time, you people need leadership because I know that you can't fend for yourself, that is why. I am taking charge. Now, does any of you have anything to say about that? The look that he gave them, with his eyes going immediately black, as lightning started to crack around his body. The members all quiet themselves down. Even Kabuta did not say anything, but... He was indeed pissed off, but Zoom hands were vibrating at an enormous rate. Alright, now that everyone is on board, he said his eyes are turning back to normal. I will be taking over and bringing Urchmar dreams of Kanoha down to its knees to reality. Is everyone on board? They all nod their heads. However, one of them spoke. Well, what about Ruta Senju? Ah, that little brat. Well, I was the one that killed Sinadi Senju. He took many of our men and for that, we shall publicly execute him. When the time is right, I will drag his beaten, broken body here myself and hang him up. To show the rest of the nations that the sound is taking over, we will take Lord Urchumar's plans one step further. We will go beyond Kanoha, beyond the other villages and show the entire elemental nation that we are in charge. But our numbers were severely depleted since what happened within Kanoha. Oh, you don't have to worry about that. I've gotten a partner who is currently in the process of helping me refine our numbers and make them larger than before. It will take some time. However, for the time being, we have to make sure that Kanoha doesn't find us. The numbers are low right now, but soon enough, they will be enough to rival any major head village and I promise you that as long as you stand by me you will have all the riches all the power you ever seek doesn't that so nice he said the members started chuckle as they turned towards one another of course that indeed so nice remember said zoom if any of you choose to betray me I'll rip your heart out before you can even blink well that's it for today I will follow up with the rest of the information. With that he was gone, leaving a trail of blue lightning as he moved. The members turned towards Kabuto. Is, is this really what's gonna happen now? As they were hesitant to really say anything to Kabuto, not knowing his stance in this. You heard the man, said Kabuto. He is in charge now, said Kabuto as he looked towards Kimimar's head. Kabuto was pissed off. However, for now he couldn't make any rational moves. But he had a plan, and there was no way in hell that he would serve someone like that brat Zoom. Did he really think that he could take Urchimar Sama's spot? If anyone was gonna do that, it was gonna be him. But there was one thing though, Naruto Senju had to fall otherwise. Well, the chaos that he would bring upon them 
will be nothing normal and nothing they've never seen before. After all, as Kabuta had saw the chaos that he caused in Kanoha, luckily he was able to escape. However, the sound for is dead. But, he wondered what kind of acquaintance Zoom had. Who was going to help them gain their numbers back? Because right now the sound was really lacking in numbers. But the other bases were still out for the grabs. As Zoom has not been there yet, however, with his speed, it would not take him too long to get there. And place them under his command as well. Given how stubborn Gorin was, he wondered if she would agree with this as well. But Kabuto did not care, he only needed some time. Because once he finished what he was gonna do, well, he will be the one in charge. A distance away, Zoom rushed through as he made his way inside the room. As he arrived towards the room, it was a large open space away from the sound. It was more like a giant cave, however, inside. The ship was at the far back. Zoom stepped forward. So, as he looked towards the ship, as he saw once again, the pattern on the ship, it was three circles. As they connected to each other like an upside and down triangle, however they didn't have a bottom that linked the bottom parts. It started glow green. So, I take it everything went well. Yes indeed, said Zoom. I did just as you said. I slaughtered the ones who tried to oppose me. However, in doing so, our numbers have dwindled even more. I told you not to worry about that. I have not arrived on the elemental nation yet. However, I will arrive soon. And with what I will bring you, it will be easy for you to erase this Naruto Senju and several others who might oppose you. And world domination will not be too far behind. As Zoom chuckled to himself. And what's so funny, Berniak asks. It's funny to think, uh, day before yesterday, I would never think that I would be working with some alien. And all of this, Lord Urchmar might be gone, however, we will make sure that his legs live on as I take the world in his name. Oh and yes, you are free to do what you please with your minds. The ones that I don't care about that is. Well, thank you. You have been a gracious person so far, said Brainiac. The machine did not sound humorful or anything, it just sounded like that. An emotionless machine. So what about the girl? She's still asleep. You said you found her drifting out in space. Yes, seems like something went wrong with her shipping location and she was sent. Here to be exact however, I found her in a black hole. I was able to restart her ship and attach myself to it to send her here as well. I never thought I would find a plane like this. But I'm glad I did though, said Brainiac. We will need her for this. With the yellow sun of this planet, her abilities that were unknown are now enhanced to ridiculous degrees. And I will use that to make sure she worked for us completely. Like brainwashing, said Zoom. Yes, you can think of it as that. Don't worry, Zoom. You will have your army. And the world will bow at your feet soon enough. That's all I wanted to hear, said Zoom. As long as you don't pull any shitty move and try to betray me, we will be good. Now why would I do that, said Brainiac, after all. You've been so generous. As Zoom smirked at that, he made his way off after a while. As Brainiac was there. Not physically, of course. This was just a piece of his consciousness. Placed on the ship of the girl that he found. He was not lying, but she was a Kryptonian, and on this planet her strength would be unrivaled, and Brainiac was planned to use that for his benefit. Does this mere stupid human really believe that he can control him? Brainiac has been all over the known universe, and planet's technologies far upseed the one on this earth. To be frank, this place was a backwater land that didn't really have that much technology, and that made it perfect for Brainiac. He will subjugate this planet and he will control everything. However, hearing that there was another Kryptonian here from the abilities that Zoom had listed out about this Naruto Senju, he could tell that it was a Kryptonian. The world Yellow Sun gave them unnatural abilities and she was one of them. However, Brainiac wondered who exactly it was though. Which other Kryptonian was it? Well, it doesn't matter. 
he will fall soon enough. And Burinyak will remain supreme as he move on to gain more infinite knowledge all over the universe. This world will not be too hard to subjugate. Meanwhile, that was going on. At Kanoha, a lot of life were lost in the attack. But one big name stand out though. Tsunade Senju, one of the Sonnings. She was taken away, killed. A lot of people had a lot of trouble dealing with this. After all, Snedi was well known and well liked as well. She was loved by many people. And she was taken away so soon. It wasn't her time. She did not deserve to die and the one that killed her escaped. Oruchimaru was dead but that didn't mean anything. To some people because the one that killed her got away. And to people like Naruto who wanted to find Zoom and literally tore him from limb to limb. Well, he was severely pissed off. He was beyond pissed off but exactly he knew. When he get too angry he knew exactly what happened. So he refrained himself from getting too psychotic. However, he had lost his mother. He loved her more than anything in this world. She took care of him, she loved him. Despite not being his real mother, she gave him everything he ever seek, love, affection. She showed him that despite their blood connection not being real, he would always have her no matter what, and nothing will ever change that. But now she was gone. Nurta stood there. The funeral had happened, and now it was gone. As almost everyone had turned up to pay their respect, the place was ran packed. As everyone wanted to mourn her death. However, that wasn't going to change anything. That wasn't going to do anything. She was still gone. And he would never see her again. Because she was gone. As Naruto stood there, looking down towards her grave. His eyes not really showing any emotion. That look a twinkle of happiness that was always in his eyes. They did not seem to be there anymore. It was in that someone appeared behind him. The person made her way up towards him as she was now wearing her onto mask once again. As she stood beside him without saying a single word, I guess this makes me a hypocrite, huh? said Naruto. Yuji will look towards him. What are you talking about? she said. What makes you a hypocrite? I've killed before. And you know that, Sensei, said Naruto. And now that I've lost someone close to me, it's like I'm truly understanding what death is. However, I already know what it is. And yet, this feeling that I have will just not go away. She reached out and placed a hand on his shoulder. Naruto, it's alright to mourn. Besides, the people that you've killed, they were the scum of the earth. People that would go on to do horrible things if they were not put down. However, your mother was one of the kindest, sweetest, a bit violent. As she said with a bit of humor, but the person that love you the most in this world. And she will always love you no matter what. I'm sure she told you that more than enough time. Huh. I still feel like a hypocrite, said Naruto. Why so, she said confused. Well, I allow myself to lose control. And I killed so many. But I don't feel a shred of remorse for them. And I just don't care. And at this very moment I want... To find where the ninjas from the sound is located. And I want to rip them apart in my bare hands. I also want to go to the sand. And burn every single individual there. I just want to let loose. And burn the entire village. That is what I mean by me being a hypocrite. Naruto. I know you're hurting. It's not easy to lose someone precious to you. But I don't want this for you. And your mother wouldn't have wanted this as well. I don't want you to fall down a path that is hard to come back from. You've already done so much. I allow the Hokage and his ninjas to find a peaceful way to handle this out with the sand. They were tricked by Orochimaru. They still were planning on invading us, said Naruto. His tone getting a bit hard. Yes, I know that, but still. But still what, said Naruto. They should just be forgiven. 
Are you telling me that I should just let this go? To forgive the guy that killed my mother? No, of course not. That guy is a different case entirely. If we ever find him, I believe that you should have your time. Of discretion. If it was me, I knew I would have wanted the same thing. But remember, you still have people here that love you. And your mother wouldn't want you to go down this path. Yeah, you're right, said Naruto. But she's gone now. Yes, I know that. And what, said Naruto? Are you going to tell me that everything's going to get better? Look, Sensei. I know that you're just trying to help, but please stop. Because you giving me pity is something I don't want right now. And besides, the pain is not going away. Because this isn't some dream and I'm not going to see her again. I'm not going to do anything stupid. I'm not that idiotic. I know my boundaries. I'm not just going to go attack a hidden village. Even though I could. And besides, with the amount of power I contain, I mean, who could stop me? Naruto, she said, yelling at him. Please, stop thinking that way. You know what will happen if you do. I told you this once before, when you told me your secrets. You possess power that none in this nation does, and you just keep on getting stronger. And if you go down this path, the line between good and bad will become so thin to you that when you step over it, you won't even realize. Please, don't do this to yourself. Don't sully your mother's memory like this. I'm sorry, said Naruto. As she looked up at him. I guess it's just hard. I know, she said. She pulled him into a hug. But we're all here for you. And we will not stop being here. The Hokage is requesting your presence, she said to him. As Naruto nodded. Whenever you need me, I'm here. Remember that, she said. As she gave my light kiss on the forehead. As she made her way. However, Naruto's face did not change. Her words did not change his resolve. Zoom had gotten away from him. He had escaped. And it was incredibly difficult to find him. Going out there and just searching the entire place. Well, he's tried it before. As he said before, there's not much that ninjas can do in this place to hold him back because he could fly. However, he didn't know the first place to look. The hidden sound was not really a village. And there was a lot of innocent people in the vicinity who lived in that village. And the temptation of just burning the entire civilization there was so strong that he had to leave. The only reason that held him back was if he accidentally killed someone that did not deserve it, parents, or killed their daughter, their son, how would they feel? They would feel just like him. And the people that did not know about this or were part of this did not deserve to suffer either. So that is why he will have to wait until Jure got information on Zoom. Jure had left. The man more... Well, he was more close up than ever before. Snath is better hit him greatly as well. As Naruto turned his back before he flew off. Moments later, Hiruzen was sitting in his chair. As Naruto landed in the window cell before, he hopped into the office. Oh hey old man, he said. As Hiruzen didn't see that light in Naruto's eyes anymore. That little twinkle that was always there of hope. It was just not there anymore. Naruto, how are you doing, he said. Well, I'm not okay, said Naruto. I can understand that. Have you talking to someone about this? It is not good to hold your feelings in for too long. Yeah, I know, said Naruto. Don't worry. Kushina, Mito, they're all there for me, said Naruto. I don't want to get into this right now. You call me, said Naruto. Why, of course, yes. I had a meeting with the council this morning about the promotions. The rest of them should be here later, but I figure I would get your promotion out of the way first, since it is the biggest one. We realized it wouldn't be justified to name you Chunin, as that is just a demotion in a sense. Not really a good promotion. However, you don't have the proper feel experience for the Jonin title, so as Tears and Reason is drawn, pulled out a flap jacket. However, the color was more grayish than green. From here on out, Naruto Senju, you are now Special Jonin of Kanoha. Special Jonin. Wow, said Naruto. 
I didn't expect the leap. Given your performance and everything you have done so far, it shouldn't be that surprising, Herzen said with a smile. I'm proud of you, my boy. Yeah, thanks, said Naruto. Well, that is mostly what I called you in here for today. And just want to tell you to take it easy. Jiraiya has left out to try to find the ones that are responsible for this. With Orochimar gone, it will be hard for him to find them because, knowing their impending doom, there is no doubt that he will try to hide away. And also from today on you are now the head of the Senju clan. Yeah, figure that much, said Naruto. But I want to know something what is going to happen to the San. They will be held responsible for their part in this. You do not have to worry about that. I will not let this slide that easily, Harrison said. As Snathy was his student, he loved her like a daughter and she was taken away because of all of this. However, in the end, their feelings were jumped the gun because of Urchimaru. But they still plotted to invade us, so I would not let it go that easily. But I cannot completely ostracize them at this very key moment when they are trying their best to make us happy. Otherwise, we will just be making another enemy in the future. And having too much of that is not pleasant. Yeah, I guess you're right. What about Kumo though? They were helping in the invasion. Yes, the Raikage surprised me and several others by telling his ninja to help us fend off the opposing forces. He said that we should have some talks. No figure, said Naruto. He saw what Kuno is capable of and now he wants to be allies. Yes, you're exactly right there. However, Having an ally is better than having an enemy. I suppose you're right, said Naruto. The entire time he was talking, Hirsen saw. Looking through the eyes, they were not showing any sign of life. Why don't you go and get some rest and relax? Take a few days off before you start to embark on missions as a special joining. Yeah, thanks, said Naruto. As he unstripped the jacket before, he placed it on. Quite a good look on you. As Naruto nodded before he left. At the hospital, Sakura Haruna slowly opened her eyes. She had been sleeping in and out of consciousness. Well, not really that much, but still. She had fallen asleep and wake up back and slipped back in. Her parents had came by and she spoke to them. The doctor said that she would be fine, however, she should not overuse her voice until her vocal cords completely recovered, which they were doing at a extravagant rate she'll be fine in a day or two but she was still in the hospital as there was bandage on her neck she heard a tap on the window as she turned a small smile came on her face as Naruto flew in he noticed the tuning jacket on the table well I guess I shouldn't be surprised you performed quite well against the San Kunoichi said Naruto not to mention your overall performance as soccer gave him a smile I see that they took it one step further with you. That's not a tuning jacket, is it? No. I made special joining. Congratulations, she said. Thanks, said Naruto. I'm sorry I wasn't there, she said. Come on, Sakura, you were injured. Yeah, but still. I wanted to be there for you. How are you holding up? Well, I've been better. Naruto, I know you, she said. I have known you for a long time now. And I want you to stop that. What are you talking about? Said Naruto. The trail of thoughts that are running through your mind right now. I know it's hard. I know it's beyond difficult. And I can't say from experience what you're feeling right now. The close I can get is when I first awake my abilities and I hit my mom. And I felt so horrible but that is still not close enough. But please, stop thinking that way. What are you talking about? Naruto said. I can see it in your eyes. Your thoughts are plagued with a lot of darkness right now. And I don't want you to go down that path. You know it's not something that your mother would have wanted. As Nurta sighed. I guess you know me too well, he said. Please, don't do anything stupid. I don't want to lose you too, she said. How exactly will you lose me, said Nurta. Do you really think that anyone out there can actually make me submit? Nurta, stop it, she said. No, like truly. The only things that can truly slow me down are those green rocks. And even then, when I truly tap into my power, 
It's not even that horrible, but he still can wound me though. It's been hours. It's felt like days to me though. As I keep on thinking this over and over again. Why should I just submit at a normal rate? I have the power, why shouldn't I use it? To do what she asks. To force the rest of the other nations into submission. The days that go by and getting stronger and stronger. Why can't I just stop them from doing all that they seek to do? Why can't I just march into the Hidden Stone, into Kumo, into any other nation and force them to follow Konoha rules otherwise? As Naruto eyes turn red, I'll eliminate them. Naruto, she says, she got her feet. Soccer, you shouldn't be, no. Don't tell me to sit down. You can't do this. Why not, said Naruto. Yes, you're powerful, but... You'll be starting something that will just plague the world. You lost your mother, but think about the countless others. The thousand others that will lose their mothers and fathers, their sisters, their brothers. Think about them. Think about what you'll put them through. Well, I don't care, said Naruto. Why should I care about them? Why should I care about anything? Because I care about you, she said to him. And not just me. You still have people here that loves you. And who wouldn't want to see you go down this path? And, if you're going to do something like that, you're going to have to get past me. Really? said Naruto. As she looked at him, well then, I guess we're to still meet. Soccer, do you really believe that you can stop me from doing as I please? No. But, if you're going to do it, you're going to have to kill me. Oh, what? said Naruto. You heard me. I would not let you throw your life away. For doing something stupid because you're hurting. I'd rather be here for you 100% than let you do this. I've always been here for you. And I care for you more than you even know. And I don't want to see you go down this path. As she walked for him and placed a hand on his cheek before. She pulled him into a hug. I know that it hurts. But please, just don't do anything stupid. I won't tell anyone about this. About this conversation, just please. Keep things on the wrap. I'm begging you, she said. If you do something like this, it will just start another world war. And then things will just become more bad than good, she said. We will find this bastard. I will personally help you hunt him down and eradicate him from the face of this world. But please, don't start anything stupid. I'm begging you. As they broke the hug, as Newt looked at her, he took a deep breath before he exhaled. There are some things I got to figure out, he said. Where are you going, she asked. To meet my father, said Naruto. As he flew through the window before she could stop him. Sakura walked over as she sat on her bed. What he just said was troubling her greatly. She knew that Naruto had power to shake up the entire world. He was strong. Invincible. And she knew if he went angry. His power became 10 times stronger than before. If the Hokage or the others found about this, things won't be so pretty. She couldn't allow anyone to know about this, despite knowing that this could be rather detrimental. She had to keep it a secret in order to protect him for his own good. And she couldn't believe that he was going to do it. And she didn't know what was going to happen with him meeting his father as well. Time skip. At the compound. As Naruto arrived, the moment he arrived he was hugged by Mito. As she just held on to him not saying a thing for a few seconds. Before she broke apart. As she then placed both hands on his cheek. I'll always be here for you she said. Always. No matter what. Thank you said Naruto. Is your mother here? Yeah she's inside. As Naruto made his way. He arrived in front of Kushner. Nurutakan, where is it? said Naruto. She raised the eyebrow. The crystal. The one that my mother took. Oh, you want that? she said. Yes, said Naruto. And I also want something else. Locations. Locations? To where? The village of Uza, he said. As Kushner looked at him curiously. Moments later. So you want to meet your father here as an axe? Yes, yeah, said Naruto. I promise. I already know what you're thinking. I won't do anything stupid out there. 
But from what my biological mother said I had to be somewhere open where I can use this crystal to create some kind of fortress. I need to sort through a couple of things. And I'm afraid if I don't, I won't get back into the swig of things, said Naruto. And I need to do this alone. Alright, Harrison said. I'll have faith in you. That you won't do anything stupid. But you are to return back to this village once it is over. Do you understand, he said. Yes, said Naruto. I'll be taking my leave now. Naruto, be careful. I will, said Naruto as he moved off. Time skip. As Naruto flew through the air, he was making his way towards the land of Oza. As he had to do this, he just had to. It was time. He had also paid his biological mother a visit as well. She was saddened to hear that about Snad that she was gone. And she also saw the changes within her son. She told him to be careful, as someone like him who possessed such power should not have a certain mindset. It could spell a detrimental sentence for this entire world. Time skip as Naruto blew past the waters. He flew straight over the whirlpools as he crashed landed on the land, creating a massive crater where he touched down. As Naruto glanced around the place, the place was barren as he started to walk. The Uzumaki clan. This clan once belonged to Kushina. And she lost everything as well. If it wasn't for her daughter, the woman would definitely be depressed right now, however. She had Mito. She took care of Mito despite the things that she went through. Which had to be a lot when she was younger, losing every single one. Losing her entire existence. All because of greed. The other nations. Because they choose that the Uzumakis were not important enough to live. Because they did not share their power or wealth with them. And they chose that they should die. So what's different between him doing that, choosing that other people should die as well? As Naruto continued to walk, the more he walked, the more terrible his mindset got. He arrived. As he pulled out the crystal. Well, I guess as Naruto threw it. Far over into the distance. He stood there for a moment but absolutely nothing happened. He wondered if he should have done something. The place started to tremble. As he stepped back, it was then that massive blue crystals launched themselves out of the earth. As it created a massive gigantic fortress in the span of a few seconds. Naruto was shocked at that. As he calmly made his way towards it. Arriving towards said crystal, he wasn't sure how he should go inside because there was no entrance. He placed his hand on the largest form as it suddenly split open. As Naruto was shocked that all of this just built like that. He stepped inside it was cold. However, his skin is more durable than most. So it was not that bad but he could feel a chill. That meant it would be rather cold for someone normal. Making his way in deeper. He glanced around as he saw several glowing crystals. He still couldn't believe that one small crystal as this could do that. This was just amazing. As he glanced around, the ceilings had crystals coming down as well. The light from the outside was not even affecting the area. As he seemed to have an eternal light inside. Hello? Is anyone here? He called out. Causing his voice to echo all around. But Naruto saw no one. That was until he saw the crystal that he threw. It was floating. Naruto reached up and held it. He noticed there was a pattern over the side that fit the crystal perfectly so he placed it there. Upon doing so he heard a humming sound. The day has finally come. Naruto spun around rather quickly as he saw a man standing there. His body looking a bit hologramic for a moment before. It returned back to normal. He had strange black hair that spiked out in a strange way. Dark eyes. There was an X on his cheek. He was wearing a black clothing with a strange crest on the front with an X on it. Black pants and some strange boots. His clothing looked expensive despite the blackness there was some stitching in there. White trimming going down. So you have finally come. Are you him? said Naruto. 
Are you my father? Yes. It is nice to meet you, my son, he said. Huh. As Nurt looked down, I don't really know what to say. After all this time, I finally do this and now I don't know what to say to you. You don't have to say much, my son. I'm sure that you're curious about yourself. And what exactly are you? That you've come and seek me out to find out more about your heritage. Have you spoken to your mother? Yes. You seem trouble. What is wrong? My mother on this planet. The woman that raised me was just recently killed. Ah, I see. And this anger you? Yes, said Naruto. And you want to meet the ones that did this? Hey, if I'm not mistaken. Exactly, said Naruto. Then why haven't you, the man asked. Because I can't find them. But you don't seem like you're giving up. Of course not, said Naruto. So what happened when you do find them? I'll rip them apart in my bare hands. I know that might not sound good to you. It seems like your mother has not told you much about me, son. What do you mean? First of all, my name is Bardock. And I am a Saiyan. Do you know exactly what Saiyans are? No. My biological mother never told me much. She told me that you would tell me. Well, you should know. Saiyans are a race of warrior clans. We used to go around conquering planets, wiping out civilizations. W what said Naruto? Yes, we were not exactly good people. We actually killed for fun, exterminate planets for fun. So, that means this darkness running my blood then said Naruto. Yes, I believe so. So, Bardock, you shouldn't have a problem what I intend to do then. The other people. The other people said Bardock. People who I come to know as family as well and friends. They don't want me going on this path. Well, with the amount of power that you should contain at this moment, it wouldn't be a good path. You could throw your world into chaos. I've learned this from two generations now. Whenever someone is stronger than most comes up, many decide to rise up to stop him and they will do whatever it takes to do that. Do you intend to lose more people to succeed your goals? What? Of course not. I won't lose anyone else. How certain are you about that? Life is fleeting and it can easily be taken away and I know that personally. So what are you saying I should just give up? Of course not. But I think you should think before doing anything too drastic. As I said, whenever one is powerful enough to rise, the others will not allow him to stay powerful for too long. We did not have any time to do much research about this plant that we sent you to. However, we do know that it's been in a state of war before. Tell me, how is the world at the moment? The world is at peace right now. There is not much going on. However, my village was recently attacked that ended up leading to my mother's death. I see, said Bardock. I want to know something, said Naruto. And what is that, my son? How did you and my mother meet? I mean, from what I've noticed so far, you seem to be from a different planet, and not to mention your different race entirely. So what is going on there? Oh, that is quite simple, you see. We did not just go around conquering planets, for no reason. We were working for someone, a tyrant. His name was Frieza. With his overwhelming power, none of us could stand against him. So we were forced to work for him. However, he realized that we were gaining too much strength, so he wanted to kill us off. I catch on to this, but the others did not believe that he would do something like that because of all the planets that we brought in for him. So they did not listen to me. However, when the time came, he wiped our planet away like that. I was hit with that blast. Somehow, through some rare unexplained event, it ripped a hole in space and time. And I found myself on some strange planet. I was hospitalized for a long long time. When I did came to, I found out I was on Krypton. A lot happened. The leading family of this planet, they wanted to know more about me. I had strength, 
far exceeding anyone on that planet. While they had technology, I had raw brute strength. And not to mention, I was able to harness key to use for devastating attacks. Are you aware of this, my son? Yes, I am, said Naruto. I see. So you know a lot already. I'm glad, Bardock said. This will make things a lot easier. Then what happened, said Naruto. Well, the head family and I worked together for a while, trying to find out what happened. In the first few months, my memory was not exactly good. However, the vision started to come back to me, and I remember everything about Frieza, about my planet. But it turns out in the Kryptonian archives, what happened with the Saints happened a long, long, long time ago. I, I don't understand, said Naruto. How could it be a long time ago? You were just... You heard what I said before, correct? There was a rift in space some time that ripped open once. Freeze attack allied with me. A strange anomaly in space. I'm not sure how this anomaly happened, but it just did. And once that rift torn open, I was thrown through it. And I was brought to Krypton. So that happened a long time ago. Krypton gathered information from all over the known universe. However, where planet Vegeta used to be located was light years away. And there was no point in going there because everything was gone. And there were some talks that the Emperor Frieza had been annihilated by another scene. But given the time period, even with our longevity, I doubt that scene would have survived. Because of old age, at first I was lost. I did not know what to do with my life. So I just continued to train. The things we say and do best to get stronger. However, chaos soon erupted on the planet when a man known as Zod decided to take control, saying that he was the one that was supposed to be in charge and that the leader of the main house was leading Krypton into chaos. And I guess Zod was kind of correct. After all, Krypton is now gone. Due to the bad actions that we took, Zod led an attack that killed many important people. I was the one to stop him and send him away, him and his people, for punishment where they would suffer for all the acts that he commits. The main family was happy that I was there. So we stopped by one another and I once again had a purpose to do something. I became their guard. At the time I didn't have much to do. However, there was this woman. She was a part of the head family as well. It turns out that the one that she was supposed to be wedded to died. Have your mother told you about the breeding facility within Krypton? Yes. She told me about the creation of the children. Was Zod one of those? Yes. His main purpose was to serve Krypton and protect it. However, to do so he will even kill his own kind. To make sure that is a reality. And the Kryptonians did not like that one bit. However, your mother and I start to fall for one another after some time passed. And things happened and we fell in love. And that is the result of you. A hybrid between a Kryptonian and a Saiyan. Something that has never been seen before. But as I said, things happen because of our bad actions. And that result in the planet being destroyed. And you were sent here. The first plan that we were going to send you to got hit by an asteroid before. We could do anything about it. So we had to make a wise decision and I guess you end up in good hands. As Naruto was sitting down by that point. So that's how you and mom met, huh? Said Naruto. If the planet was not destroyed, things would have been a whole lot different, said Naruto. Would you have preferred it that way? As hard as it is to say this, no, said Naruto. As painful as it is to lose her, not knowing Snaddy, not knowing the people I've come to know here, I couldn't even think of that idea at all. That is alright my son, he said. Our past should not be affecting your future, but I'm sure your mother told you a lot about the Kryptonians. Yes, but I barely know anything about the Saiyans. As Naruto watched the light came out of the crystal and went over his entire body, as Bardock went quiet. What's wrong? said Naruto. It seems your DNA mixing is more incredible than I thought. Because of the long ages that the Saiyans were here, 
The Kryptonians never even met one up in personal, however, they have stories, and they knew a lot. One thing to be personal about is the legendary Super Saiyan. What's that? It's different from a normal Super Saiyan a being that is able to access a new form which grant them great strength. Are you talking about when my hair go green? It seems like you are more special than I thought my son. Your Kryptonian and your Saiyan DNA are clashing against one another, however in a good way. You are able to harness the power of the Ozaru transformation. Ozaru said Naruto. Yes. We were able to turn into giant apes. With the full moon that is our ape to conquer most of the planets. Wait what? I'm going to turn into a giant ape? No you're not. You were not born in that tale unlike most saints. Because your body absorbed that. And also it absorbed ray from the sun. And also the moon as well. To enhance your Ozaru form but. In a humanoid way. However. This state would not be coming easy. I'm sure that when you do go into this state, your mind is clouded by rage, am I correct? Yeah, a lot of rage. But someone was able to snap me out of it. Well, that's a good thing. I doubt anyone could have stopped you if you hadn't been snapped out of it. You possess great power. If this power was to fall in the wrong hands, I'm afraid that this planet would not survive. Something happened to you, didn't it? said Naruto. What do you mean? Well, from the way you speak about the Saiyans, you're not as bloodthirsty or the way I expect. Yes, you're right. It was your mother. She changed me in a way I never thought was possible. And I guess I'm not as I was before. However, if you choose to take this as a bad or good thing, it is up to you. But know this, your choices that you make from now on will affect you for the years to come. So think wisely about what you want to do. As Naruto looked down, this was a lot. Hey, can you tell me some more about the Saints? Yes, of course. After all, it is a part of your training. Wait, my training? Yes. Did you think it is just our meeting that will be the only thing that will be taking place? No, my son. You have a lot to do to reach your true potential. That is if you want to. Of course I do, said Naruto. And your reasons? I'm not sure yet, however. It's better than doing nothing, said Naruto. I suppose you're right there. I only hope I can guide you along the path to find one. Yeah, thanks, said Naruto. Meanwhile that was going on, Kabuta had scurried away from Zoom, making sure to make it not look that obvious. As he finally had some time alone, as he found himself in a lab, Inside said lab on the wall, he moved towards where a dish was. It was a wide open dish. Inside were vial, vial upon vials. As he pulled one of them out, a name was on a tape around it. A name that was Zoom. There were several other names on the other vials. Aruchimar Sama never got to achieve what he truly wanted. However, Kabuto was going to finish his work for him. If Zoom really believed that he would be the one in charge, he was sadly mistaken. Kabuto only needed some time, but he couldn't allow Zoom to find this out. The people here feared and respected him. After all, he was the one that took down a Sanin for their master Urchimaru. But still, Kabuto would not bow to someone like that. He was just a whiny, crazy, narcissistic brat. And Kabuto would not bow to someone like that. Never. Time skip. Two rather powerful men came together as they were discussing the world at the moment. The Nine Tails would be a difficult one to capture. Given the recent development of Naruto Senju, it turns out that he's a lot stronger than I thought. A man in a spiral mass said, and he's so young. To imagine how much stronger he will get as he grew. The man in front of him had orange hair and piercings over his face. Do you believe that it was one of those crystal tea acts that gave him this enhanced strength and power? Yes, I do believe so. Ever since these things appear, there has been numerous people popping up with all sorts of abilities. It seems like he was one of them that was not reported. However, we cannot let that stop us. 
His power might be great, he might be strong, however, when the time comes I will take him down. After all, what mere mortal can stand up to a god? <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, I'm not laughing at you. Just the situation. However, I do intend for you to keep your words. Everything is coming along well. With the nations all in a frenzy about, that child growing exponentially stronger, we can use it to make her a move and go after the Teobesis. And that is what we will do. Soon the entire world will know of the Akaski and the might they possess. And they will also know of pain as well. As the man stepped forward on his balcony, showing his face, as he had rather peculiar eyes, as they were the Renegons, the legendary myth, however, he's unaware who exactly he's going up against. Underestimating people can get you killed, and he was underestimating Ruta greatly. Meanwhile that was going on, the same blonde girl was screaming at the top of her lungs, as she was lying down in a strange machine as she was screaming there were three antennas connected into her skull as they were coming from where bring out martin was on the ship she screamed so loud that the cave started to shake the place was literally trembling but once bring was finished the three antennas dislodged from her head it was then that bring symbol came on her forehead yes just as I expected, with the power that is granted to a Kryptonian on this planet, and with this Kryptonian under my control, and that fool Zoom believing that he is the one in charge here, when I finally arrive on this planet, I will take it as mine, and there won't be a single soul that will be able to stop me. It will just be another conquest in my victory. Brainiac said to himself, as the girl's eyes snapped open, however a few seconds earlier, her screaming was near to the location where that strange object had landed on Earth since Naruto arrived. On the ground that strange black liquid had formed into something rather hideous. It had strange spikes over his body. Those spikes were meant to hurt even Kryptonians, even under the sun. This creature was an abomination. This creature literally spelled doom and the scream from the Kryptonian woman the thing snapped its eyes open and roared. It had white eyes, spikes coming from its body. It had a strange symbol in its chest. This thing was meant to wreak chaos and havoc. This thing was doomsday. But guys, be in subscribe right here. For once next person do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification they posted. Remember, share to all of your friends in social media platform. And also guys, stay tuned for the rest of what is coming your way and I hope you guys enjoy each and every one of them. Bye, I'm off and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.